I did not want to stop there. One of the key factors of M-Shield is the fact that there are applications where you'd want to use a double shielded effect. So let's say I wanted to increase the shielding capacity of a standard layer of this after I insert my copper tape as I described around the leads and I have everything grounded as it should be with my ground uh, drain and I insert my first layer of heat shrink, I can then go over with an additional layer of heat shrink and that should increase me to about a 50% increase in shielding, acting as a second Faraday cage. Okay, so essentially giving you about the same, about, not 100% not of the same, but about the same characteristics of double shielded cable, guys. That is how effective this is. The beauty of this, I mean, many of you are out there, I'm hoping shaking your heads because this is pretty amazing stuff in the sense that if you buy a system overseas and it comes fully assembled and all of your cables inside the system are not shielded, you can do that very easily with this. It's very effective. And again, any of the cables, and I know I'm going to get questions on this a lot, what cables are most effective for this? Um, again, spindle cables should always be double shielded. I always recommend a double shielded cable. I would not use this product, but if you're dealing with low voltage type applications, high frequency type applications, this is going to be your best friend. So anything inside the system near drives, perfect. If they're individual drives, this is going to be your best friend. Breakout board applications where, again, we're dealing with a lot of wiring going around, power supply applications, you definitely, definitely want to pay attention to that.